M0 FXB Digital Ham Radio Diary. Welcome. M0 FXB. So here we are with my ICOM 7300 and my LDG tuner, AD100 Pro 2 Auto Tuner. And I, I actually do use that with my 705 as well. So I just decided to buy one of these cables because my tuner didn't come with the cable that fits directly to the ICOM 7300 from the the tuner so that the idea is you only have to push one button you don't have to run power to the the tuner you've got this connector at the back here which I will show you as I connect it then you've got from that connector at the back of the icon you've got the interface cable which is this one here and the the power comes from this connector and goes into the actual tuner so you don't have to power the tuner separately so I thought, yeah, that'll make a good video. So here's the cable. They're about £15 on eBay. Just put in ICOM LDG tuner. I'll put a couple of links in the description. And so we've got a G5 RV connected to our 7300. Well, there's a patch lead there at the moment. And I'm going to show you that. So let's go around to the, to the uh, back of the radio first. Right, we're at the back of the radio. I'm going to act like you've never done this before. So... Here's the tuner. Now, the TX on the actual tuner goes to the radio. So you just want a patch lead for that, get a good quality one. Put that in here. There you go. So you've now got a connection from the tuner to the radio, but you still haven't connected the antenna yet. So now here's my patch lead, which goes to my G5. RV and we're just going to do it on antenna one at the moment. So the antenna goes into the tuner and the idea is that the tuner then does its work for you. Does it does the work and then sends out or receives via the patch lead so that the impedance can be corrected by the tuner. Now remember a tuner doesn't make your antenna good, it just matches the antenna. It's all about impedance and ohms and all that, and it has to match, otherwise you'll have damage to your transceiver. So we've also got the power cable in, of course. So the next thing is to connect this, this cable that I've purchased. Now I'm going to do this whilst the radio is turned off. So, on the back of the 703, you can see, if I just zoom in a bit, there's that white connector there. So we're going to connect that first and it's one side it's got like a a pointy bit here which we will line up with here this pointy bit so we'll put that in there like so so right okay as you can see that's in there we'll zoom back out like so then, on the back of the tuner, you've got the interface cable, which is the red one, which goes to the, into the left, the left hole at the top of the tuner. So we'll push that in there like so. And then this is the power cable that's taking the power from the 7300, and we're going to plug that in like so. So you can see power, interface, white cable pushed in, you've got the antenna, the patch lead, so everything's connected here at the back of the radio. Bit, bit of a glare, bit of glare here. But Right, now let's go to the front of the radio. Right, we're at the front, we're going to turn the radio on, we've got our microphone plugged in. Did you see the tuner started flashing straight away? Now we've got our radio, the reason I've got my radio in emergency mode is because the, tu the built-in tuner, uh, really it couldn't match the G5RV very well. So if you go in emergency mode, see the E here, it just sort of gives you the, the ability to um, go outside the, pram the normal parameters of the tuner. If the tuner is showing an imbalance more than one to three, it won't even tune, it'll just say no. And that's why it's in emergency mode. So I'll show you how to get it out of emergency mode. And also this will show you how to get it in. So you just go menu, settings, 
other go down to other see emergency and then i've selected tuner so you unselect that and then you select restart to set there you go now you're in the normal parameters of the tuner and just do the opposite if you haven't got a external tuner like this one here then uh, use the emergency tuner it works well and d5rv long wire you can do a lot with the 7300 right so anyway so we I haven't even turned this on yet. The first thing I'm going to do is lower my power right down. So to about 5%. Let's go less. 2%. Um, like so. I'm going to get it onto a band that I know has some activity. Now we'll turn the RF gain up to the top. Let's get it so we can hear the radio. Like that. We're going to do the tuner back in the middle. Probably do it on... Filter, filter 2, we're on LSB, <clears throat> right, first thing, let's turn the tuner on. Now straight away, as soon as I've turned it on, it's automatically just started tuning for me. How good is that? So, where's the on-off tuner? So turn it off. See, there's the tuner off. Now that just, that just literally works brilliant. Uh, I'm very pleased with that. So, um well worth getting that cable and faffing around with the the cables is a bit of a pain let's just see if we can get any contacts let's up the power let's go to one to one seven five that no, one eight oh and let's um up the power a bit because that made it a bit easy for the tuner. Let's go to 20 watts and let's tune it again. So all we do is literally just push tuner. There you go. And again, it's saying that it's tuning fine. Now, the AD100 Pro 2, you need to look at the manual how to use this this uh, this tuner. It, it's, it's, it's the usual thing. It's straightforward when you know, but the... Changing these buttons um, affects everything, and you've got an antenna connector here. Like I'll just do that one for now. So at the moment we're on a, by default. It's on antenna one. If you push antenna here, look, you get. See the way you can go to antenna two, and it's straight away selected bypass. Now I've noticed if you go up one, then it'll it will relay, it will go to antenna two. Um, but we haven't even got an antenna in there. Maybe that's why it says bypass. I don't know. So, see that? Yeah, so basically, if, I, if you push the down, it bypasses. The bypass is effectively like not having the, the tuner connected. So, but that's not what... It, this video is just about connecting it and using it um, straight out of the box. So we've got higher... Let's go right up to 60 watts. I like to do it in increments. Let's turn the tuner on again. Now you'll notice that I didn't earth the the tuner because I'm just setting this up on the kitchen table. But you should run an RF earth, you know, a few spikes into the ground, uh, several spikes really, and the more really the better to get a good earthing on this. But let's just tune, and then if we give it a quick whistle, let's get it on. Now to get the meter, hold your finger here. There's your meter there, SWR from the bottom. Or obviously you get an SWR reading on the actual tuner as well. So let's just give it a quick whistle. Yeah, and we're not showing there's any problem there with SWR. Let's go to full power. SWR is fine. So yeah, I hope this helps you set up your your tuner, your AT100 Pro 2 Auto Tuner with the ICOM connection cable. 7.3, all the best. I'll just do a bit more because I realized that the uh, I didn't have the in normal mode, which is menu preset. I should have been in normal use. I was in FT8 use, so that's fine. We can still do some more testing. So let's uh, just start again on five watts. There you go. Then we'll up it to full power. 
There you go, we're chewing it. It's chewing well, and you can see the ALC going up now. That's what was thrown in. We can give it a whistle. You can see that's working. Should we, uh, whilst we're still here, let's um, see if we can get a contact. So we go menu, scope. Turn it up. Uh, turn on the NR. It looks like it was already on. On level 5. It's very busy on that one. Uh, if you hit the twin PBT like so, turn it to the left, that can take some of the sharpness away. Let's try on a different band. Uh, way too much uh, noise on 80 for me. Let's try 20. Now, again, we'll have to tune that, so we'll get the power low. I mean, I think when it tunes, it lowers the power anyway, but I just want to be sure. Let's watch it tune. Oh, it says bypass. We need to get that onto so that it's not bypassed. Right, tune. We'll get the SWR on here as well, so we can see it. Right. Let's just up the power then to 50. Give it a tune again. Now why are we getting on bypass? We don't want bypass. Right, let's do tune. Not really sure why it's doing bypass. Ah, it could be because it's just a high SWR, do you think? Right, let's try again. Seems okay. Let's turn it up. I did. The, I used the tune button on the right on the actual device there, on the LDG. So it's not great conditions, but it's okay. We've got it set up. You can see it working. I'm guessing that it selects bypass if it's if it feels like it's too high. Um, I could just turn it off and on just to make sure. Should we do that? Let's turn it off. Turn it on. Get the power to low, and then we'll hit tune again. There you go. You can see the power going out there. Let's go to center fix here. You can see my signal when I whistle. One, two, one, two, test, test, test. So it all seems fine. Right, this time it is 7-3, all the best.